thank you, Nirmala, for sharing the insights from the report that is likely to be published very soon. Uh, clearly, I think the whole topic of future of work continues to evolve, right? That is, uh, it meant something else in 2019. And I think as we are in 2024, it, it really is a, is a huge new thing. Shashi, thank you so much for your partnership uh, for the entire, you know, uh, learnings and insights that we've been able to put out around the whole theme of future of work. We believe you've just got started. And yeah. like Nirmala said, around those three pillars, there are so many different nuances. So, so really appreciate your partnership and your support there. Uh, you know, I'd love to, uh, one, understand from you what you think about this partnership, but more importantly, how do, how do you think what is the future of work, right? Because it, it just means so many different things to different people. If I talk to a group of people, they say it's about hybrid work. If I talk to another group of people who now think it's about Gen AI and taking away their jobs, uh, for somebody else, it may mean skilling and upskilling. So how are you thinking about the whole future of work concept, sir? Uh, so, Sangeeta, to start with, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Uh, we truly uh, value our partnership with NASCOM, and we've produced some really good work in the past. And for me, really, uh, this report on the future of work is significant. And it's significant because this is not a new topic. People have always been speaking about the future of work at any given point in time. But today, we are at truly at the cusp of work changing. And we're truly at a place where work is really evolving. As Nirmala uh, you know, rightly pointed out, there are three pillars to this report. One which essentially focuses on the future of work and second and third, which focuses on the future of work spaces and workforce overall. Now, specifically speaking of the future of works in tech, I think today we are thinking, looking at organizations that are embracing new technologies, which essentially means there's a growing demand for specialist roles specifically around uh, AI, ML scientists, quantum computing researchers, quantum AI developers, blockchain specialists, et cetera. These roles are complex and that's why the adoption is limited today. And employers are addressing this challenge by either upskilling their uh, you know, existing workforce or really hiring uh, experts from outside. And uh, you know some of the uh, roles that have been always sought after, like for roles in data analytics, uh, that's always been in the lead. And we've also seen a continuing demand for AI and machine learning, uh, people who, who sort of work in AI and machine learning. Now, speaking to the future of workspaces and workforce, I think there is a fresh perspective and new ideas. This is which is coming in because of the Gen Z and millennials and the future workforce who are at the forefront of uh, sort of really reshaping the strategy for employee engagement, retention, and acquisition, and setting new benchmarks. Today, if you look at the workforce, uh, specifically in the tech area, millennials and Gen Zs constitute almost 90% of the workforce. And this generation is really sort of enabling diversity and a shift in how uh, in preferences from the previous generations. The other big change in the way workforces uh, you know, is evolving, is the role of the gig economy. I think uh, we have been seeing, uh, specifically in the BPM segment, uh, gig workers being hired in, in quite large numbers. And this is sort of creating a new dynamic as far as the evolution of the workforce is concerned. And lastly, as the dynamics of job roles continue to evolve, a lot of companies, forward-looking companies, have adopted a hybrid and flexible work approach. Uh, I think uh, when Nirmala spoke earlier, she spoke about this need from companies to get people back to office, whereas uh, you know job seekers would still like to be able to work remote. There is merit in both of those uh, you know needs uh, from the side of the company and the job seeker. So truly progressive companies are adopting a hybrid and flexible work for their employees. Thank you so much, Shashi. On a lighter note, do you see your platform getting a lot of job applications with prompt engineers written on it? Or is that also a fad? I, I do think that we will be seeing a lot of these jobs come up. Uh, we we are already seeing uh, specifically jobs around, uh, you know, roles like for artificial intelligence, etc. come up quite a lot. So I'm sure that's something which will keep continuing. So, so continuing on the theme of jobs, uh, Shashi, you know, the 2023 on the back of that whole great resignation phase was a was a year of moderation. It was a year where everybody 
said, okay, my hiring is going to be more measured. I'm going to do as need demands because I have a large base of employees that I've already got and I need to enhance my utilization. I think as we're entering 2024, uh, I mean, the commentary does not look to be very different. Maybe in select areas, it's it's different. But, you know, as a, as a platform that sees these trends at a broader uh at, across sectors, across industries, across company level, what are the hiring trends, particularly in the tech sector, that you are seeing, and and especially as we are entering another year, what does that what does that mean for both uh, the employers as well as the job seekers? So yes, uh, so we have uh, we have we have the Indeed hiring tracker, which sort of tracks data in terms of demand uh, for different kinds of roles, including uh, tech roles. So what we are seeing basis the Indeed hiring tracker is that there is significant interest for jobs like data analysts, software engineers, sales engineers, product managers, and designers. And really these are skills that are in demand. When you look at key skills, I think one thing that we've seen over the last year is the rise in generative, generative AI skills. And these continue to drive uh, what companies are looking to hire from. I mean, these are the skills that people are looking to hire for. But, but do you, uh, compared to your hiring tracker of 2022, uh, are there any trends that you can talk about on how hiring has shifted? Hiring has shifted to companies hiring for more specialized skills, where they're looking at very specific uh, technologies. So what was generic is sort of not as much as in demand as it was in earlier years, that may change as uh, the global landscape evolves. But over the last year, what we've seen is really a demand for specific skills around new newer technologies. Uh, so that's something which we think will continue to 2024. Uh, these specific skills will continue to remain in demand, irrespective of how the market evolves as well. Because today, a lot of companies are making that huge shift, uh, which is going to be will impact if all of us, either as consumers, as workers, or even employers and entrepreneurs. Totally true. I think our, our last report also showed that, that uh, you know, while overall hiring is moderate, the demand supply mismatch for emerging tech skills right. continues to be still uh, significantly high. And while staying on the topic of uh, emerging tech skills, uh, Shashi, uh, I know we've talked about AI data analytics, you mentioned quantum uh, and cloud is obviously continues yes. to be an in-demand skill. Are these, uh, how much of the skills that, and I know you may not be looking at the resume, so I'm, I'm just maybe asking that as a forward-looking question, but how much of it is for people who have upskilled in these new technologies versus they've done education or specialization in these categories, right, in these oh. technologies? I think, uh, again, uh, upskilling rem will remain important. Companies will uh, want to hire people who've already had a flavor of work, who know that you know these employees have faced challenges and solved for real world problems, and now have the new skills that are high in demand or companies need. So that will continue to drive how uh, hiring happens. Uh, I think from a perspective of uh, how people view uh, human and AI collaboration, we will see that workforce will need to skill up. And that is something which will drive significant amount of new hires for companies. However, I, that does not sort of discount people who are coming into the, uh, coming into industry. I do think that people who are qualified, who are getting qualified in new skills and bring fresh thought and perspective will also have a, a pretty good uh, chance of uh, making the cut. You talked about uh, gig workers and how, uh, especially in the BPM sector, you're seeing new roles evolve. Uh, can you explain that a little more on, you know, what are these kind of roles? And the study does point out that there is acceptance of these roles, but there's concern on data security. So how do you manage the balance, the risks and the opportunities? And then this whole culture of does the employee, or no, employee is the wrong word, does the professional want more and more flexibility, not just from hybrid and remote, but, you know, the ability to work at his or her own pace, right? So critical. Uh, so what's defining the, you know, the entrance of gig workers is the fact that there are many roles that may not need as much access to very confidential data. 
uh, evolution of new technologies uh, around CRMs that give people access to what they need to do their jobs. And finally, the availability of technologies in many, many parts of India, specifically uh, the internet infrastructure. So I think these are some of the critical enablers of the gig workforce. So many companies that have roles, for example, in say customer support, uh, in, in sales, in uh, in those in allied areas, or in uh, you know support to their customers from a tech standpoint. So all of these kind of roles have seen an increased uh, demand for gig workers. And these are these are the kind of roles that are really driving the gig workspace, uh, specifically in the tech world. Yeah, well, it's an interesting trend. It'll be great to see how we mature with respect to gig working as, as we move forward. Uh, just shifting gears, uh, Shashi, on you know the hybrid working and you know in the job seekers continue to want flexibility, right. remote working, whereas the employers want at least some amount of return to office if not complete return to office right so how how are you any any crystal ball gazing on how do you see this evolving because it may not um i mean there are two ends of the spectrum and now you're in an environment where hiring is more muted so how do you see this evolve what can you do to change mindsets uh on both sides if needed right yeah, so before we actually think of uh, changing mindsets or looking at what the future is, we must understand what's driving this. So when we look at specifically companies, why do they want their employees to come back? One, uh, definitely about maintaining effective communication and culture. Uh, that becomes a challenge when it's a pretty large remote team. And like you spoke about confidential data for companies that handle a lot of confidential data, obviously there's a, a data-based risk. And three, for many companies, uh, there is definitely a challenge in measuring productivity. And four, uh, it can also be said that, look, when you are working with your colleagues in, a, in, in one place, there is a lot more creativity, there's a lot more uh, interaction, and there's a lot more bonding, and there's a sort of a move towards a common goal. So that's, a, that's what is driving uh, employers uh, wanting people to come back. But why do job seekers prefer to work remote? I think it gives them a lot of flexibility, uh, specifically when you're living in large Indian cities uh, with the amount of traffic, pollution, et cetera. Uh, that takes up a lot of time and adds stress and adds to fatigue. Two, uh, a lot of people have seen that in the course of the pandemic that the quality of output that they produced did not dramatically change just because they were not based in office. So that's what is driving uh, job seekers and employees to want to be able to work from uh, work remotely or work from home. Now, this is reflected in data. When we look at Indeed data, we are seeing an 8% increase in number of job seekers who are actually searching for remote jobs. Okay. And correspondingly, we are seeing a 6% decrease in the number of remote jobs available. So you asked me, what does the future look like? I think for most progressive companies, the future is hybrid where they bring in people to office on a few days uh, so that some of the objectives around uh, team bonding, creativity, uh, you know, brainstorming, et cetera, are solved for. And there are a few days where the employees can retain the benefit of uh, having to, you know, of working remote or working from home. <clears throat> so that that is possibly what I think is where the future is headed. No, I think that's what is what we are hearing, and I, I think the panel after ours, ours is really going to look at these and other topics uh, that come up. But uh, you know, just coming back to the skills theme for a minute, on you know, we talked about all these emerging technology skills of AI, big data, uh, quantum, IoT, etc., being being much in demand, and there is a a supply demand mismatch, uh, you know, that we are seeing as organizations in these areas. Do you also see a global uh, interest to rec recruit from India for these skills, not necessarily they have a presence in India, but is there a labor mo mobility opportunity either in remote working or relocation that that is being explored? No, absolutely. I think that's something which is pretty, uh, uh, is getting a lot of traction. Uh, if you do look at, uh, you know, the career sites of many of these new age uh, companies that are, you know, sort of at the forefront of uh, artificial intelligence, you will likely see that most roles say remote. Uh, and why they say remote is because skills for these uh, for these jobs remain scarce. 
And most of these companies would not like geography to be a sort of obstruction to hiring great talent. So uh, I think it's always been the case when you've been, when as a job seeker, you've been, uh, you're qualified, uh, you are keen to take on challenges and you're good at what you do. A lot of uh, the obstacles and a lot of things that you actually want companies are willing to offer, which is why for these companies, for these roles where there is definitely uh, some level of uh, shortfall or scarcity in talent, they are open to uh, remote work a lot more. Makes sense. So, so clearly, I think remote work will be a more in demand or a very uh, productionized, uh, you know, skill where you know it's a repetitive job, so it can be done outside your workplace, or it's such an in demand skill that you are willing to hire from anywhere and offer anything that is needed. So, so I, I, yeah, I agree. I think the whole model will continue to evolve and, and you know, I'd love to hear the insights from the panel. But my last question to you, Shashi, is really around, you know, one of the insights in the report that Nirmala shared was around DEI and how, uh, you know, focus on uh, women uh, in technology, women overall diversity continues to grow. So do you see trends like, um, you okay. know, women returnship, yeah. et cetera, also showing up stronger, on your platform, or is that uh, not as common? common? I do think that DEI will continue to be an important driver for companies because uh, what has really shifted uh, from the past is the need for diversity was earlier thought of as some sort of a social good, something that uh, we will do because we can talk about it and therefore be seen as be seen as being cool. To today, diversity really being a, a sort of a business imperative. Because one, when you are open to diversity, your talent pool significantly increases. And two, you're not leaving out good parts of talent. When you're making a sort of changes to accommodate a different kind of uh, and, and I'm here, I'm not just talking about diversity in terms of gender, but overall, when you're willing to make that mind shift that, okay, there are people who can be hired irrespective of their points of view, their uh, sexual orientation, their gender, et cetera, then a whole new world opens up and you're able to hire a much more uh, promising, better, and possibly a more talented workforce. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shashi, for those very insightful comments. Uh, I hope the audience uh, appreciated that. If there are any questions or others we can answer on chat or later, so I'll hand.